Today I'm going to take you through how I package an original for shipping, more specifically today, an unframed canvas. If you don't know me, my name's April, I'm a full-time contemporary fine artist based in the UK. I mainly do acrylic paintings, but sometimes we do some other stuff as well. I'm new to the YouTube scene and my next video will be a studio tour and a bit of a get to know me. So I'll tell you a bit more about myself and my art in that video. If you have any questions for me at all for that video that you'd like answered, drop them in the comments. But for now, let's jump into packaging this painting. All right, it's voiceover time. Hello, hello, let's do this. So the painting we're gonna package in today's video is a Mandalorian commission that I completed in February this year, 2024. The first thing I'm doing here is removing the block of wood that allows me to hang the painting on the easel wall. And this client is not framing this piece when it reaches its destination, so I am attaching the two hanging hooks to the back. Something else I always like to do as well is to write the title and the year completed on the back, as well as a signature. And you can see that this piece is named This Is The Way and it was completed in 2024. I try to be as environmentally friendly as I can with my packaging and my entire business in general to be honest and I'm still on the hunt for an appropriate bubble wrap replacement let me know if you've got any recommendations what I'm doing here is just wrapping the painting up in a protective layer of acid free tissue paper I use tissue paper instead of glassine purely because it's more environmentally friendly and I'm using black because that's my business colors unfortunately I do have to use glassine for bigger paintings because tissue paper only comes in a certain size but I can get away with it for a lot of originals and all my fine art prints as well and then I'm just making sure that the tissue paper is secure on all sides and corners. And the final part of this stage is just to put my logo sticker in the middle because it looks nice. My business colour scheme is teal white with a little bit of black and I really just love adding all these little extra details. Step two is the certificate of authenticities and these should come with any original painting or piece that you send out and mine come in the little blue presentation folders as well. I'll pop a little business card in the folder and then I'll fill out all the painting details on the certificate. These are just a little personalised official certificate from me so that you know that you are getting a 100% original April read piece. These can be as simple or as bougie as you like, but as usual for me personally, it's all in the details. I'll then add my custom embossed gold foil stickers and then pop it in the folder. If you're making your certificates for the first time, there are so many different elements that you can include. Mine simply include the title, the completion date, the size and the materials. I actually designed my own certificates from scratch on a free website called Canva. I designed pretty much all of my stuff over there, so feel free to check it out. Step three is the bubble wrap or the extra packaging. And like I say, I am looking for a suitable bubble wrap replacement, so let me know if you have any recommendations. Now, quite an important part of this and what some people don't realise is what you want to do with paintings is make sure the flat side of the bubble wrap is the part that presses against the painting, not the bubble side. Or you can accidentally end up with a pretty horrific dot pattern across your varnish. What I've actually started doing since recording this video is also wrapping up the presentation folder in tissue paper and actually sellotaping it to the bubble wrap. Because otherwise, it's just going to move around and when they open it at the other end, it's not going to be in the middle which would get on my nerves. For bigger or heavier paintings and also paintings that are framed too, I will also add extra bubble wrap just around the corners. But because of the size and the weight of this one, I didn't need to do that. I just went ahead and secured everything with tape. I do this layer of bubble wrap in such a way that the corners are protected anyway. It would also be much appreciated if we could just ignore the unfinished workbench for now, which you probably didn't even notice till I pointed it out, but I will be finishing it this week. Something I do love to do is to save all the packaging from my canvas deliveries for reuse, because some of them, like this one, are the perfect size for the canvases you you need to ship. If I didn't already have a box to fit, I have big sheets of cardboard and I would make a custom box around the painting. So I'm just placing the canvas inside and testing how snug it is when it's closed. And of course, as you can see here, there is just a gap on the left and the right, which I will use tissue paper to fill in and just make sure everything is nice and snug and cannot move. And this is Domino, a four-year-old border collie I will be introducing him properly in the next video because he will probably be in every single video and he's a pretty important part of the studio. So here we go then, just packing the corners and the sides with that black tissue paper again. It's just really important for me that everything looks nice and matches together. Once I've done that, I'll simply do what I call the wobble test, literally just wobble it around and make sure the painting does not move at all, and then just close all the edges up and make sure there's no gaps that I've missed. Once that's all done, we're into the final stages and it's time to grab the tape guns. I like to use the clear tape to secure everything and then the fragile tape along any of the opening edges for the customer. We all know the struggle of when you receive a package and you cannot figure out how to open it, so that is not a problem when I do this method. At some point, I'm going to get some custom craft tape made with my logo on it. However, I did just take on this brand new art studio at the start of the year. 
So right this minute, I am only letting myself buy what I need. Once the parcel's complete, I'll book the shipping and print the label off. I'll take all the photos I need for evidence, which I'll explain about in a minute. And then all that's left to do is to send the tracking link to the client along with the expected collection and delivery dates. So that is how I package my canvases. Once the painting is packaged, I will measure the width, height and depth and I will also weigh it. Make sure you take photos of all of these measurements as I have been bitten in the arse before. There have been a couple of companies that have charged me quite a bit extra because apparently my measurements were incorrect. I know they weren't, but what can you do if you don't have the proof? When it comes to actually booking the shipping, I use a company called Trans Global Express. You enter all the details and then it pulls quotes from a load of different shipping couriers. Generally for the UK, I go for UPS and for international, I go for DHL. If you're gonna have a look at Trans Global Express, one thing to note if you look through their T's and C's is that they only insure for loss and not damages. On my website product pages, I have a shipping section with information and I also have a separate page just for shipping information too that clearly states that the shipping Shipping included in the price only includes insurance for loss and not damages and if they would like to upgrade there is a company in the UK called pack and send they will insure for damages if they pack the painting themselves but as you can probably imagine this is quite expensive I hope you find the information in this video helpful and if you've got any questions drop them below I will try to answer them within the next month or so I will be doing a video on how I package my fine art prints for shipping and like I mentioned earlier my next video will be a studio tour and a frequently asked questions a little bit about me about my art and the business so make Make sure to look out for that and again if you've got any questions for that video drop them below as well but that's everything for this video i will see you in the next one